We're live. We can't hear it. Good morning, everybody. I'm Assemblymember Sharon Quirk-Silva, and it's a privilege to be here with you today to honor and celebrate those that we have lost. I want to thank Julie Kim for her beautiful rendition of May the Angels Lead You to Heaven. I also want to thank all of you for joining us today for our virtual COVID-19 memorial service. I'm here with uh, my mother, uh, and my sister and my husband, Council Member Jesus Silva. Honey, I can't hear. Uh, we know that the impacts of COVID-19 have not only affected so many of us and our neighbors and families, but thousands across America, close to 500,000. I want to take a moment to, of silence and honor of the lives of those who have passed and we'll take a 30 minute uh, moment of silence, 30 seconds, sorry. Where's all the participants? Are they having a hard time letting people in? Now we'll begin with an invocation and I'd like to invite Vanessa Stricker, I'm sorry, Stricker uh, from One Life City Church and she will begin. Uh, Vanessa, welcome. Thank you, good morning. Will you guys pray with me? God, we welcome you here into this sacred space. We come today with heavy hearts as we grieve the loss of those we hold dear. We know that you are close to the brokenhearted, so help us to feel your presence with us. As we mourn together, we know that our collective grief reaches your ears. We know that you've heard every cry and that you've caught every tear. We thank you for bearing witness to the pain and for carrying it with us. Lord, we honor the lives of the family and friends who have passed on as a result of COVID. We recognize the value of each and every one as they bore your image, God. We thank you for the gift that we received in their lives and we cherish the legacies that they leave behind. God, we pray that you would lead us as we continue to move forward in this season of uncertainty. As we are unified in our grief, help us also to be unified in our love. Show us how to be a community that bears one another's burdens Show us how to be neighbors who look out for one another's well-being. Show us how to love as you have loved us. Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done among us. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Vanessa. That was beautiful. 
Uh, we will now move to uh, another speaker who I know personally, uh, but I also want to let you know that as we looked for people to be uh, help us with this um, ceremony, I wanted to make sure we included voices that are out there uh, nonstop 24 hours caring for those in, that are the most vulnerable in our community. And that certainly would be uh, Father Dennis Chris from St. Philip's Benisi. Not only is he uh, leading the way for faith in our community, but he has made it his own personal uh, mission to help those that are homeless. So with that, I want to welcome St. Philip Benisi Church, uh, Father Dennis Chris. Thank you. Uh, so as we gather on this uh, solemn, uh, solemn uh, morning, we recall that there are 3,726 people who have died uh, here of COVID uh, in Orange County. And uh, certainly in our part of the county, the numbers are of course uh, among the highest. Uh, you know, the Santa Ana might be a little higher or Anaheim, but this area has been quite affected. And it's been affected in real, truly a, a multitude of ways. Uh, you know, here at St. Philip Benizi, when we pray for those affected by COVID, we begin really by praying for those who've been unemployed or un underemployed as a result. And there's an enormous number of people, especially in the Hispanic community, that have been uh, been affected in this way. I think, in particular, of a parishioner. Uh, you know, nice stocky guy, you know, willing to do anything and so forth, uh, Francisco Reynoso, who, in fact, uh, for him, this was such an irritation early on, you know, with, with this, because he's like, what am I supposed to do? I have a family, I need to support them, I have no means of other than support them, did the best that he can, but it could, but really tried very, very hard to work. Eventually, he got COVID. Eventually, his entire family got COVID. He survived, okay, but he ended up kind of being uh, being for nearly a week uh, or over a week in intensive care. Came back with an oxygen tank only in the last couple of weeks, where he and his family able to come back to mass. Uh, so the, the, that uh, then we go and we recall all of the sick and those among them, of course, those who have died. Uh, one of them uh, was was a lovely man. He was 97 years old in a wheelchair. Always, you know, when he came to the 6:30 mass before COVID, he and his wife sat in the first row at the 6:30 evening mass. First, his wife got it. I went over to hear her confession. Then she would say, "Well, my husband has it now." Uh, he was one of the longer termers. He died uh, just before Christmas. And uh, yes, 97 years old. He had a long life. Was a lovely, lovely man. Had you know had some difficulties in health even before all of this, but greatly missed in our uh, in our parish. Our uh, our dr uh, the drummer for our 12:30 music group. Uh, yeah, he died of COVID was 44 and 45 years old, left a, uh, a lovely young family, you know, as, you know, as a result. Uh, even, you know, then uh, across, you know, then, uh, you know, just other kinds of suffering. I remember, honestly, Gabby Garcia, a uh, activist for OC United out here in the neighborhood, she broke out in tears at one of the, you know, the you know, C CSUF uh, healthy, neighborhoods meetings talking about early on in the crisis that she was in a grocery store, all the workers Hispanic and none of them in masks and most of them didn't even know at that time that there was a risk. And that kind of, of, of suffering or folks who, who find themselves in, in situations where perhaps the employer doesn't take it as seriously as we do. Yeah, or as, 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 as others do. And then what do you do if you work in a situation like that? 
uh, you know, finally, of course, there are the homeless. And mm -hmm. this is you know, officially only five people in the county who are homeless died of COVID. And yet, since the beginning of the crisis, the mortality rate of folks who are without fixed abode has doubled. Um, how that is, uh, whether the folks died directly of COVID or died of, of simply the added isolation that even before people didn't want to go talk to, uh, you know, talk to them as it is. Now with COVID, it was even harder. Uh, the, the fear of going to the hospital where you're gonna be isolated from everybody you know, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, it, it, so it's a manifold uh, you know, disaster, really. And yet, well, in all of this, uh, well, we, we come together, we find different ways to meet, we find different ways to worship, we find different ways to conduct our, our business. Ah, yes, last one also, the teenagers that uh, Diana Trout, our, our youth director here, uh, she uh, has spent a good time uh, you know, keeping the, the teens happy because, yes, suicide rates, of course, among teens have gone up as well. So there are so many ways and we ask really, uh, well, the Lord to help us uh, to appreciate each other's needs and so that we seek uh, then to, uh, to respond to them in a safe way, in a holy way, in a way that, that makes us uh, go through this and su uh, survive, you know, overcome this crisis, uh, perhaps even stronger than we were before. May God bless us all. May God bless those who, uh, who have been so affected by this virus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Dennis. Uh, and as was noted, it isn't just those that, that have uh, passed on. It's so many families that are suffering, whether it's economically, whether it's from learning loss, whether it's from uh, missing weddings and sports and social interaction, and of course, isolation for many of our seniors that we've wanted to uh, keep safe by staying away. So it certainly has been um, incredibly brutal. And that's not to mention even the 40 individuals uh, that died on the streets of Orange County just this last month. And Father Dennis has personally made it his, um, his job to make sure that those are recorded and that that information is put out of how many individuals that are homeless that are dying every single month in Orange County. Thank you again, Father Dennis. Uh, next, we'll move to Western Diocese. Di Diocese of Wan Buddhism, and we will hear from them. We pray for those who have died from COVID-19. respond to us. May laws respond to us. Dharmakaya Buddha, fourfold grace. These days, we encounter many difficulties in the world of pandemic, and this can be reflected in our minds and hearts. During this challenging time, may we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha to remain centered in order to overcome all obstacles. 
COVID-19 has deeply affected this country and the whole world. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives, and the whole country has been overwhelmed with pain and loss. May we pray for people in great suffer and those who work in the front line for the public health. May all those who passed away during the pandemic find peace and be delivered through karmic recycling in lower realm and be reborn in Buddha land. We are concerned that COVID-19 will continue and might affect people's minds as well as their lives. May we look deeply within ourselves and see ourselves in others. May we protect the helpless and share what we have for the less fortunate. Sote San, founding master of One Buddhism said, There is nothing among the myriad of things in the universe that is not the Buddha. May, may we cultivate our original nature and guide all beings to the world of harmony and compassion. We pray with one mind and one heart. That was really meaningful. I wanted to also offer a prayer myself. And uh, some of you know that uh, not only did I lose a brother two years ago, but I lost one. We lost one uh, just um, uh, December 31st. So this is, I don't know if you can see it, a picture of my brother, but this was what's from his uh his uh, memorial and the, the prayer says, smile and let him go. Smile and let him go, release him from his pain to sing and laugh and run again and fill the summer rain. Don't let your love detain him from the joy he has known. His life's fulfilled, it is God's will. So smile and let him go. Uh, next, we will have a video and a reflection from Rabbi Nico Sokolovsky. 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 Rabbi. Or it's a video, I'm sorry. In Jewish tradition, the memorial prayer, the mourner's Kaddish, as we call it, starts with the word. May it become great again. And when we think about greatness as the first word of the memorial prayer, we realize that when we go through mourning, our universe becomes reduced, smaller, and we pray for once again, experience that greatness, the greatness of God that is represented by the wonderful humans that we share, that we share our lives with, and that when we miss them, when we lose them, when we physically lose them, our universe becomes smaller so we ask for expansion we ask for greatness and symbolically we greet mourners in jewish tradition saying may you find comfort in the place may the place comfort you and when we say the place we mean God, the place, Amakom, is one of the names of God that appears in the Bible. But this very special name for the Divine Presence reflects on the place, on the community, on those who surround us, those who we surround with our presence. And so we understand that our role 
is not limited to an event. Mourning is not limited to the event of a beloved person passing, but it is a long road. And we understand the importance of the community to surround us, to support us. We understand the importance of being community to surround and support those that need love and support. And we understand that when we are intentionally present and that, and that when we allow that presence to be with us, we are becoming partners in a long road, but also we are becoming partners in restoring faith and hope. May the memories of your beloved ones be always a blessing. Amen. That was beautiful. And we want to also thank Rabbi Nico Sokolovsky. I think I did a better job there uh, from Temple Beth Tifka. Uh, now uh, I will read one, a second prayer. And uh, this one, some of you may he have heard at memorial services, but it's always been a favorite. And it's called Miss Me, But Let Me Go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights and gloom in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each one must go alone. It's all part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. Uh, finally, we will have a video from Father John Kim from the Korean Angelican Church. Let us pray for those who died in COVID-19 and their families. Lord, have mercy on those who died in the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, comfort their families who passed away with the COVID-19. May the souls who have left this land at rest in peace in your arms. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you, O Lord, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter names of eternal death. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ear to our spare, but spare us, O oh Lord. Holy oh God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the fear of the eternal death. O oh, worthy and eternal God, do not let us in the death. Turn us away. mercies cannot be numbered. Accept our prayers on behalf 
of your servants and grant them on entrance into the land of life and joy in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Everyone, the Father gives to me, will come, come to me. me. I will never, never turn away anyone who believes in me. me. He who raised Jesus Christ from, from the dead will also give new life to, to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in the hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we command to Almighty God our brothers and sisters, and we commit them body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless them and keep them, give them peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May them soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of the Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Again, I want to thank all of our uh, presenters and speakers and our singers. We have two of them. Uh, we know that uh, I represent North Orange County, but whether it's North Orange County or Texas or New York, uh, people are hurting right now, whether it's because they have not been able to come together for grieving or burials, whether they're missing their loved ones, a great grandmother or aunt, whether they haven't been able to spend time with a newborn or toddler, uh, or they're missing their friends. It's a difficult time. I thank all of you who've come together. Uh, I want to, we will be ending with a song from a former student of mine who has now grown from when I knew her at, I believe she was uh, in my third and fourth grade class at nine years old, and now she is 14. And uh, we will be presenting, she will be singing uh, Ave Maria, Madison Becerra. And again, we thank you for joining us. And here we have Ave Maria by Madison Becerra.
Oh my gosh. Thank you to Madison, just so, so acclaimed and at such a young age, you could see uh, God is shining through Madison. So with that, we want to say thank you for joining us. If you or your family have any needs uh, that our office can ha help with us, uh, please contact our office. We're here to serve you and uh, we wish you the uh, best of days today and are sending love out to your families in a, in a difficult time. Thank you again, everybody. And thank you for my team who put this together. Thank you. Uh, thank Bye you, everybody. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. We touched, you touched me. Thank you. Okay, ready. Off.